And what I realized is that uh, uh, all of my colleagues, all of the banks that I, I, I worked with uh, and, uh, and uh, the fintechs that we, we were working in, are incre uh, working incredibly hard to, to actually detect money laundering. And, and what was missing were, were really uh, the tool set that, that would help these human beings to just do a more effective job. Right, uh, GK, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for taking time to speak to us today. Hey, thank you for inviting me. Let's just get started. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. So, so Lucinity is a, is a startup that, that was bred out of uh, the need for, for more productivity in the anti-money laundering space. space. So, so uh, what I realized uh, when, when I was working for, for Citigroup and, and then uh, prior to that working for NICE was that you know, I, I saw a world around me that, that were, were, were throwing a lot of uh, new procedures to, uh, uh, to, to it and we, it was throwing uh, there was a lot of change in financial crime, and there was a dire need to, for for new tools to find better, uh, find find more for more money laundering. But uh, but mostly uh, mostly what I saw, we were in dire need to find more effective way to 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 do the monitoring. So I saw thousands and thousands of thousands of people uh, actually working in the process, and and. Uh, the reports that I got from uh, from uh, you know within where, where I used to work and and uh, as well as from with, with within uh, peers in the, the industry was that uh, the analysts were spending 80% of their time actually trying to make sense of uh, of data points um, and 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 alerts of financial time. And, and uh, what I wanted to, to do with Lucidity is really take that 80% of, of the time and make that fruitful and, and, and really do a much better do job in explaining what is on the screen. And what, 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 and what we have done is, is basically that. We, we believe in something called human AI and that is this, uh, the, this notion of using artificial intelligence to, to explain better to the humans that are actually on the forefront of uh, financial crime fighting within the banks and the fintechs that we serve and using that to, to really explaining so, so that they can make a decision whether or not something is a financial crime or not in, in, a, in a split second instead of, of multiple hours. Right, so, so when you were actually working, were working in, uh, in the industry, you, you experienced first, first hand the problem of, 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 of money laundering and the incredible amount of time that that just basically placed on yourself and, and your colleagues. Correct. I, I, I wouldn't say I, 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 uh, I saw money laundering. I, what I saw was just a, a lack of tools to fight money, money laundering, the lack of, 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 uh, of uh, using the latest technology to, to really explain to the hardworking individuals that were working in the bank. And what I realized is that uh, uh, all of my colleagues, all of the banks that I, I, I worked with uh, and, uh, and uh, the fintechs that we, we were working in, are incre uh, working incredibly hard to, to actually detect money laundering. And, and what was missing were, were really uh, the tool set that, that would help these human beings to just do a more effective job. Right, okay, so let's just take a step back and just for the average person that perhaps doesn't really understand what anti-money laundering is, can you tell us what it is and, and why, why is it so, uh, so what's the, what are the benefits that it can bring to, to both customers and to, and to banks? Absolutely. So, so uh, money laundering itself is, is uh, often, I often refer it to the uh, uh, crime that fuels crime. And I, what, what I mean by that is that uh, money laundering is, is the end result of some kind of a crime. It, it, for example, if you, if you think about uh, uh, the drug business, they, they go and, and sell drugs and they, they, they make money of it. And, and you, if, you, if, you, if you remember the Escobar uh, movies, that he was taking you know, cars all around, uh, around the world to, to actually just hide it. And the, and the reason for that was that uh, he, he actually struggled with uh, taking that cash and, and put it in, into the banking system so that he could buy a nice car from a dealership uh, with, with it. So the money laundering is this process of getting 
uh, money that was created by some shady means back into in, into the society and back into actually uh, into the play uh, into the hands of the criminal so that th they can use it to, to buy nice things and that that can be in the in in, in like these hard core crimes or it can be also a white collar uh, crime that, that is just task, ta uh, tax evasion uh, etc but it has this one thing in common that you're trying to get it into an account so you can actually buy nice things or buy companies with them or, or something like that that so that the money looks legit uh, the best way to to then describe it is uh, you know my favorite documentary and i call it a doc documentary uh, on actually money laundering is the Ozarks that that plays on Netflix. Uh -huh. So 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 if you want to really go into how this is done, uh, Ozarks is a phenomenal documentary on 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 money laundering and and the shady world that is behind it, uh, and and you can really then there see why I call it the the, the crime that fuels crime. Right, right, okay, um, and. Um... Well, just a second ago, you talked about Lucinity using something called human AI. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit more about what human AI is and how is Lucinity using it to analyze behavioral insights? Yeah, so so um, one of the things that, that we do and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, is kind of like why uh, the main concept of Lucinity is that we have brought uh, design thinking into uh, the anti laundering world and, and, and what that means is that what we're trying to do is really think about uh, what a human which is sitting in front of the computer looking at a lot of numbers and asking themselves you know here I have 20,000 transactions or 1,000 transactions or 100 transactions uh, from, from Chris and, and they're asking themselves is this money laundering? So, so what human AI uh, does is it, it uses a wide variety of, of methods, both of, uh, from AI and algorithms, uh, as well as design thinking, towards uh, making sure that this person that is sitting in the front of the, the screen really just understands what is on the screen. And, uh, and then we use a wide variety of, 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 of methods to just explain what is there and point out what uh, he or she shouldn't miss. So that means that it almost is like a like a system that starts to speak to you and show you, hey, you know, have you seen this? Have you seen that? And then uh, what we do on the vice versa, the the analyst or the human that is sitting in front of the computer and and uh, and saying, you know, hey, you know, I like this, I don't like this. Almost like you know when you're sitting in front of your Facebook of uh, and saying like I don't like th this, then and then we take that feedback and and make sure that we feed that into our algorithm so so that our, uh, that our algorithms get better over time. And this is you know this notion of human AI is is making the best of the machine and the best of the hu human and combining the power of the two. Wow, that's that's really fascinating and and. This is presumably what you mean when you talk about making money good, right? Well, well, I think that making money good is is, is a byproduct of what what uh, we have for our clients to do. Kind of like a uh, like a referral back to that anti-monitoring is the crime that fuel, 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 fuels crime. So because you know uh, if we are able to. Uh, uh, if you're able to do an extremely good anti-monitoring system, so so that uh, that means that you know we as an industry uh, of, of financial crime professionals, we are we are working towards making it more expensive to 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 actually launder money and therefore more expensive to to do crime overall. And what, where where we where, where where when we sat together, you know, in the beginning of Lucinity, it was. Actually, on the ninth month, we, we uh, looked at each other and said, you know, what are we really trying to achieve? What are we really trying to help uh, our clients, uh, the banks and the people that are, are fighting the good fight? What are we trying to help, uh, help them do? And, and uh, that came, became the mantra, which is this making money good, because we, we are the, the force behind those crime fighters in, in that journey. And human AI is just one of the tools that we use uh, uh, or, or we have them used so that they can actually make money good. 
Right. And would you say that there's a, is there a difference between talking about making money good versus stopping money from going bad? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I think that uh, I think that uh, I think that this is a ever ever um, uh, it, it's a, it's a cycle of thing. You know, uh, money uh, money doesn't really go bad or, or good, but but the, what it is used for uh, does. So so if it's if it's more difficult to to actually launder money. That means that we have at least done something to uh, good, good, good for the world because we're actually making it harder and harder and harder. I think that uh, I think that money isn't bad uh, in general. This is just a way of us uh, transferring wealth from from one human to another uh, to to another. But 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 it's this this notion of of it's uh, to make it a little bit harder. That is actually one just a, a tiny part of, 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 of helping the world become better every day. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with what you're saying. Now, let's, uh, let's switch gears a little bit. And, and the question I have for you now is, what would Lucinity's customers say if you were to ask them what they think about Lucinity? So, so I think that, you know, I, I ask that question to our customers a lot. And, and uh, we, we were fortunate enough and, uh, to, to uh, land a fantastic customer uh, the other day called, called Pleo. And, and you know them, they, they were brought up uh, in the, uh, in the Kerbin and Fintech uh, as, as, as well, uh, as well as, as, uh, as us. And um, what, uh, what, what Charlotte, uh, who is the MLO, said, said about us actually was, uh, number one, we love the Lucindy people. And uh, number two, we love the product, uh, and because it's so explainable and and it just assists my people so so well. So so what what I'm the proudest of though, you know, I, I love technology and I'm a big uh, tech nerd and and I love artificial intelligence. But what I'm a pr a proudest of uh, is uh, when customers such as Playo and Courage Cloud and and others. They, they actually all the time first speak about how phenomenal the people of Lucinity is to are to work with. Right. Well, that's a, that's a great compliment to hear from, from a customer. It is, it is. Absolutely. All right, but then um, I, we know that Lucinity is an Icelandic solution and, and we also know that Iceland was perhaps one of the most impacted countries in the, in the financial crisis of 2008. I've heard it described as as ground zero, basically, of, of, of the crisis. So yes. how has this impacted or shaped the, the start and the development of Lucinity as an Icelandic company? Uh, actually, the start, uh, almost uh, nothing at all. <laughs> so, so uh, but it has shaped a lot uh, the trajectory of the, of the business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, so the start of, of this is, of course, uh, I, I move out of Iceland uh, literally five days before the financial crisis, and uh, my my wife was actually on the plane when the first bank in Iceland fell, uh, and we were moving to the Netherlands, and and uh, I, I was going to to study study there, uh, and uh, and and the way that the financial cr uh, crisis affected us as a family was that. You know, we we had a very hard time for the first uh, half a year uh, actually making ends meet because basically the currency fell and uh, and the the, the entire uh, uh, the the money that we had back in Iceland wasn't accessible actually for 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 the long, longest time. Mm -hmm. So so uh, that shaped a lot my thinking towards the financial system. That, that we, we we needed to have controls in place, and so that uh, that uh, we we wouldn't have these kind of, of crisis. And uh, when, it, when after my studies, I, I went to a startup that was actually working on uh, on on the problem of recording. I would call the the Wolf of Wall Streets and or the other traders of the of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I started to, to work on, on getting to know the financial industry through the lens of, of surveillance, uh, you know, taking a look at who, what behaviors we wanted to change 
especially when it come, came to the investment banking uh, era, which, which was a lot of, had a lot of problems at the stage. And that led me to, to uh, join NICE Systems, which, which just continued that journey. And that led me actually to, to start to, to work with, uh, with Citigroup. And what, what, one thing that I, I noticed in all of that journey was uh, the regulators were asking for uh, surveillance and uh, all the means of, 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 uh, of technology innovation and others to do one thing. And that was a behavioral change. That was, you know, hey, ask yourself, is this the right thing? And they were asking the banks to, to really ask their employees to, to do the right thing for the for the greater mean and the bank and 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 uh, and and the argument was that if actually the traders and the banks do the right thing, that leads to sustainable growth, not just in like short-term growth with uh, the way that the Icelandic banking system were, was really set up prior to the crisis. And that really resonated with, with me this this uh, this notion of using technology for behavioral change. And and when we when I started to work on anti money laundering, the the the, the word behavior uh, really resonated with me. Of of uh, how can we change the behavior of these guys that are trying to launder money through the banks, so that the banks can have sustainable growth, as well as they have good money flow flowing through them. And when I when I came back to Iceland, uh, I started the company in uh, the Icelandic fintech cluster. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, we started to talk. Me and uh, Gulli, who was the, uh, he was actually uh, a lot in the banking system before the the crisis, and and we started to to share share an ideation of 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 a, of a world of how it would have been if it would have had a lucidity prior to to the financial crisis, if we would had had some of the surveillance technology and had some of the the will that we have today. And uh, and the last thing that, that I would say that how it affected us was that there were so many uh, fantastic people here in Iceland that had been uh, brought up in the banking system, uh, the, so that the, the 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 technology infrastructure that was creating created through the the Icelandic uh, boom years when it came to financial technology that really led uh, me to say. Hmm, it's interesting. Let's actually start to hire people here, and and it turns out that was a phenomenal de uh, uh, decision because there is so much, uh, there's almost knowledge and uh, and and will here in Iceland to, to for uh, for the uh, for the financial professionals, and they love the notion of doing good for the world, which maybe wasn't the, the entire in input into the us uh, prior to the crisis, but it's for sure now, and you can feel it in the Icelandic banks uh, where they are always thinking about sustainable growth now. I, I find that absolutely fascinating about, about Iceland because you're, you're a small ma market, and that means that, that, that the people and the resources in, in Iceland are very well versed in a, in a very broad variety of things. So. So the fact that you have all those resources that have that experience and that you can just draw from them and, and then recreate entirely new systems, I think is, is a really, really interesting phenomenon. Yeah, I think that starting a company here is, here is fantastic. I think that scaling it up to a certain level is fantastic. But, you know, we knew from day one also that the market would, wouldn't be here, here, here in Iceland. So, so we look abroad uh, straight from the beginning. Uh, and this is why the go-to-market team with Lucinity is in London and, and, in, uh, and in the States. We don't have the go-to-market here. We, we, we have the engineers here. We have the data scientists here. We have the, the kind of like the, the thinking cluster uh, uh, here while, while we sell abroad. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, okay, well then I think that leads me quite nicely into the next question I have, which is, is to do with crypto. Right, because because we saw that uh, the, the 2008 basically gave way to the cre the creation of Bitcoin and then all the cryptocurrencies that followed behind it, and one of the things that we hear very often about it is that the anonymity that's built into crypto is enab enabling criminal activity. So what's what's your view on that? I I I can't disagree. <laughs> so so I I actually have a you know I I, I honestly don't know and I'm not going to speculate about the 
the growth of of Bitcoin and other other coins. Uh, but what I, what I would say, if if you look at Bitcoin in, in itself, and and I'm gonna single out that coin because uh, that, uh, uh, Bitcoin has traceability built into it. So 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 you can actually see the entire chain uh, on in in Bitcoin, something that you can't actually do with cash money. You and you can't actually do with uh, with uh, what I would call maybe a digital money. Uh, uh, because one of the one of the when it, when it comes to financial crime, one of the things that 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 you uh, that the financial crime professionals have always dreamt of is to see actually not just one bank, uh, uh, the data from one bank, but from multiple banks. So so you, we could scan a whole nation or a or a whole a whole network of actually banks when it comes to to financial crime. Because if you if you think about if you think about financial crime. Then uh, the, the 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 people that are behind actually hiding the money, they try to uh, to hide it in plain sight. They they divide it into to multiple uh, stages and and they do business with hundreds of banks. So so when it comes to uh, financial crime, uh, creation of more and more and more and more banks and more and more and more uh, vehicles to actually launder the money, of course that's a problem. But when it comes to to uh, cryptocurrencies and others, that is just a small part of actually making it easier to to hide money throughout the world. So I think that the, the problem it, uh, by itself isn't uh, is it crypto. Uh, it's 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 actually just how do we rethink uh, financial crime fighting in a new distributed world. Which, which, uh, which means that we need to think a little bit uh, uh, across borders, across organizations, and across uh, different payment methods, which is really not new because prior to crypto, we had multiple banks, we had multiple ways of, uh, of moving money from trade to, uh, to, uh, to, to cash, to digital money, and wide variety of new methods. This is just a, a new distributed method that, that we just need to think a little bit different about. So when you ask me, I am absolutely not against it because actually I think that it could create more transparency in the system by, by having more traceability around money movements. So can you see these capabilities be also used to keep digital money good? I am I'm in the in the view that Lucinity has part of the solution to 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 uh, create more transparency and, and better financial crime fight in the new era era of digital money, crypto uh, and uh, and just cash money etc. Our approach has been let's partner with uh, specialists in the, the crypto space or in that space and, and we being kind of like the compliance hub that unifies it together for our clients. And, uh, and that approach of collaboration and actually decentralization of a, of a single surveillance system, uh, that is, I think is a, is a much more viable uh, aspect to it than actually having just one way of solving it uh, uh, like often is, is talk, talked about let's just uh let's just finish up with uh with your vision for lucinity so tell us what is it that we can expect to see in the next two to three years so a lot of happy clients uh so uh, we we are growing uh, rapidly we we uh, we emphasize uh we emphasize the client collaboration uh, we emphasize uh, uh, beautiful designs in our interfaces that just make sense to, to, to people. What we what you can expect is to see us uh, really um, being the the central hub for uh, financial crime, crime fighting uh, within uh, a lot of organizations, collaborating with a lot of uh, lot of technology providers and in, internal providers within within the banks so that we can actually make money good together instead of uh, distributed. Well, with that, GK, it's, it's been wonderful speaking to you again, as always. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time and for sharing all those priceless insights that you always have to share with us. Hey, Chris, uh, always welcome and I always enjoy our conversation. 
It's been a pleasure. And of course, we're very excited to uh, have you at Nordic Fintech Week in September. So we look forward to seeing you here. Looking forward to, to Denmark. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris.